Okay, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions regarding how to connect a FR Sky receiver to an F4 board. Uh, a lot of the questions are about either the HDLRC stacks or the Omnibus F4 series stacks. And uh, the big problem most people are having is how do I get telemetry off the smart port? Well, I'm going to try to walk you through how to figure this out. This should be pretty generic from board to board and um, follow along and hopefully this will help you out. Okay, what I have here is a Omnibus F4 Pro V2 flight controller, and I have uh, I have a FR Sky R9 Mini receiver. Um, what I'm going to go over it's it's going to be the same for the R9M. It's going to be the same for the XSR, the RXSR. Uh, the difference is, is the XSR and RXSR can easily be hacked so you'll get a uninverted SBUS and smart port signal. Uh, unfortunately, there no one's figured out an easy way to do it to the R9M or sorry, the R9 mini receivers yet. So we're gonna do this uh, just straight out of the box with no mods, no no messing around with the actual hardware itself. Um, so this will, this is the same process for the XSR, RXSR, R9M, R9, sorry, not R9M, but R9 Mini, R9 Slim. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. This is my method to go through and figure this out. And, um, don't, don't do exactly what I'm doing. Like as far as the numbers and the resources and things like that, they're, they may be different from board to board, but this will give you a good idea of how to figure it out. Okay, so let's take a big step backwards and talk about the receivers. So the FR Sky receivers output SBUS and smart port telemetry, both of which are an inverted signal. I'm not gonna get into the details of how and why and what, but just know they're both inverted. And unless you've got another receiver that can be hacked, there's not much we can do about it. So the problem comes in when we start talking F4 boards because we need a hardware inverter to interpret the signals coming out of the receiver. Most F4s have at least a S bus pad. So this is gonna be your receiver information, you know, your flight control as you move your sticks, quad goes different directions. Uh, and that has a hardware inverter built into it. So we don't have to worry about dealing with the inverted signal. So that is an easy, straight, wire from A to B. The hard part gets into when you start talking about smart port telemetry. Some F4 flight controllers have a telepad or a telemetry pad or something like that. And that is a good indication that that pad has a hardware inverter built into it. And you can go ahead and just solder right up to it. And there's probably a little bit of documentation on how to make that work as far as the CLI goes, but that's, Easy, that's best case scenario. Uh, the Omnibus series and the DYS, the HDLRCs, things like that, they don't have a, well, not all of them, but all the ones I've dealt with and have had to field questions on don't have a telemetry pad. So there's no native hardware device that is going to take this inverted smart port telemetry signal and change it to something that the processor can understand. So we have to use what's called smart port, which is basically, it's going to use software and CPU cycles from the processor to interpret that signal, figure out what it is and make use of it. Here's, here's my method to figure this out. Okay, let's clear the table here. First thing you gotta do is get on the interwebs and try to find some sort of documentation on your flight controller. This one, pretty easy, pretty good documentation. We look. Over here, we see we have a SBUS PPM pad. That's this guy here. 
And then uh, I'm not gonna put this in a, in a model, I'm just gonna power it off USB, so I need, I need positive negative, so that'll give me my five volts, five volts power and ground. So this is, the, this is the easy part. This is your receiver and your power for your receiver. Um, so if you didn't want telemetry, bang, nail these three pads, you should be good to go. Not a big deal. But now we want telemetry. This is where we get, things get sticky. You could go and wire it to a separate UART. So we got UART 6 and UART 3. But let's say you want to use those UARTs for something else. Uh, like... Um, smart audio or or GPS or something like that. Uh, either way, you're still gonna have to use uh, smart port to interpret that smart port wire. Sorry, you're gonna have to use soft serial to interpret that smart port telemetry. Uh, another thing you can do is you can wire into the LED strip. But unfortunately, this board uses a bunch of JST connectors that uh, I just don't have I don't have connectors for and I really don't want to use. So I'm going to scrap that LED strip idea. The other thing you can look for is other PWM outputs. So we can't use one, two, three, or four because those are going to be used by our motors. Those are occupied even though we may not solder directly to here. We may be using one of these uh, JST connectors. We see we have PWM 5 and 6. This is if you like you had a, a hexacopter, so you'd have motor 5, motor 6. Well, we're talking quadcopter, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to solder my smart port wire to PWM 5, this guy right here. And then we're going to use soft serial to tell the F4 flight controller what's coming through that smart port wire. All right, so let's get the solder, let's get the connection soldered up. Should be a pretty easy, straightforward solder job. Um, now on this, this particular receiver, you know, you got power, ground, this is uh, smart port, and this is our S-Bus wire. So first things first, I've already got the wires tinned up, so I'll go ahead and hit my Smart port. Sorry, S bus. And the next one is my five volts. solder on there. And now we've got power. ground. And we're going to go for that PWM5 with our S port wire, right? There we go. That's that. That's all the connections we need to do. Go ahead and tin my tip. Put my soldering iron away. All right, and we'll just double check this thing powers up off of five volts, just off a USB cord. And boom, we're good to go. Next step you're going to want to do is is uh, make sure you have the right firmware 
flashed your receiver. In this case, I have the newest or the latest firmware for the R9 Mini, not the F port uh, firmware. Most likely, if you're if you're looking at this video and you're going down this this road of the problems that that are that come up because you don't have a telemetry pad or the inverters, probably don't even bother dealing with F port. It's going to be a pain in the butt and it's really not worth it. Um, if you're F3 or F7, yeah, go ahead and use F port. It's uh, it's good stuff. But we're not gonna we're not gonna worry or talk about that in this one. All right, let's head over to the computer. Okay. I have my trans turned on, I have Betaflight up, and I'm going to flash a fresh copy of Betaflight 3.4.0 to this board. Uh, as you can see, I'm on my telemetry page. I have uh, no sensors in here. Go ahead and we'll load the firmware and flash the board. So we're starting from a fresh setup. Uh, my receiver is already bound with a model on my Tyrannus. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there on how to make a model and how to bind to the receiver. I'm not going to cover that. Um, I can tell it's bound. I have a green light. And we're flashing the firmware. Now if that's flashed, we'll go ahead and connect. And on my Tyrannus, We'll go to discover new sensors. Okay, I have RX and RSSI. That is native communication between the receiver and the uh, Tyrannus. So you're always gonna have that. Come up here on uh, Betaflight and uh, go to ports. And we know that our S bus wire is on UART1. So we'll go ahead and select that for serial RX. Save and reboot. Make sure that sticks. You always want to come back and double check. Uh, plenty of times I've chased my tail because something dropped and I didn't go back and double check. Let's go to configuration. Uh, like I said, it's not in a frame right now, so I'm not going to mess with a whole lot of settings. Uh, here for receiver, we do need to change it to a serial based receiver and S bus. A couple other things we're going to want to do. Since we know we're going to need soft serial, we're going to select that. And we're also going to want telemetry, so go ahead and select that and save and reboot. Okay, and like I said before, go back to configuration and double check, make sure everything stayed, which it did. Let's go over to receiver and we should have our receiver. Go ahead and wiggle some sticks. It's there. Uh, obviously the channel map's wrong. I'll change that just because it drives me nuts. So, all right, all our channels work. Still no, still no telemetry. Okay, so here's what we gotta do from here. We gotta go down to our CLI and type in resource. Okay, now that sheet of paper that we had that had all our pads on it, this is a good time to go through and write down what the address is for each of the resources, especially the ones you're planning on messing with. In our case, we're looking at using motor output five as our smart port pad. And we see our resource here is A01. Now before we can assign that to soft serial, we need to remove that resource from motor five. Pretty simple. Type in resource motor five, and instead of A01, just type none and press enter. Now, when we look at resource A01, we also need to make sure there's nothing else that uses it. Like right here, we have sonar trigger uses A01, so we need to remove that as well. And again, type in the resource, the identifier, and then none. There you go, now we've freed up our resources here. Now we need to assign that resource A01, or sorry, that identifier A01 to our soft serial. And we don't see soft serial in here because there's nothing assigned to it. Things that aren't assigned a value don't show up in this list. So here's what we do. We type in resource, serial, underscore, TX, it has to be a TX, 
one 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 is soft zero one and then our identifier a zero one it would help if I spelled it right there we go and then type save And hopefully Betaflight doesn't crash on you like it does to me lately. Reconnect. Now we go back to our ports tab and see now we have soft serial in here. Notice we don't have other soft serials because there's no, uh, no identifier assigned to that resource. So we'll go to our telemetry output column and we'll select smart port and hit save. And look at what just happened to the Tyrannus. We were still discovering sensors. Boom. We got all sorts of telemetry sensors. Some of them may not have any value because I don't have uh, I don't have anything hooked up to this flight controller like VBAT or anything like that. But there you go. We could stop discovery and look at there's all all sorts of sensors. And just to double check, come back to receiver. Yep, we still got our receiver movement. And uh, just as a side note, because this firmware has RSSI permanently attached to an aux channel, it says aux 16, uh, which is, or sorry, it's channel 16, which ends up being aux 12 because this is 16 channels. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16 is aux 12 so we can assign RSSI to aux 12 and hit save and that's it that's how you wear this up this is how you use soft serial to handle smart port if you have a flight controller that doesn't have a telemetry pad I hope that this uh, was easy enough for you to follow uh, this should work for just about any flight controller the numbers and uh, may be different uh, most likely they will be different, but it's the same concept. Uh, another thing you could do is if you did need to use that uh, LED strip pad, uh, pad because you don't have a pin for, yeah, you lose your telemetry when you go into the CLI, just so you know. It's say you don't have pads for motors five and six, but you still have that LED strip you can come in here and do the exact same thing and use this identifier here, B06, as long as you're soldered to your LED strip pad, you remove B06 from LED strip and you assign B06 to serial underscore TX11 B06. It is the exact same concept. It'll work exactly the same. So, I, I really hope that this works out for you. If you have any problems or questions, please uh, post it in the comments. I, I check them all. I try to get back to everybody. Um, this is this is probably the big the most questions I get are how to make this stupid thing work. And I want to shout out to James. Big thank you for sending me this flight controller. Uh, I know it was to help you out, but it's hopefully this will help a lot of other people out because a lot of people have this problem. And it's it's super simple. It costs you like one or two percent CPU load, which on an F4, it's not a big deal. Um, anyways, if you like what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. I'm getting really close to that 500 subscriber mark. When I hit that 500 subscriber mark, I'm going to do another giveaway. And I hope you all stick around for that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.